Hey guys, I'm back, and we are going to do something completely different today. Not at all normal stuff for us, but um, still something that can be customized very nicely. Somebody just broke something, I think. Um, this is a wireless Xbox controller. It belongs to me. I used to have a really cool Fallout 4 special edition controller. Somebody dumped a bunch of acetone on it by mistake. It is dead. I've wanted to make my own custom controller ever since then. Now, I'm not going to be making a Fallout 4 controller out of this one, but I'm going to be making my very own custom controller here in the shop at Patriot Armory and Coatings. And I figured we'll document the process and go through it. Now, this is not something I've, I've done before. Um, I don't have any experience taking apart a controller, putting it back together. You know, customizing, painting stuff, sure. And before I was here in the shop, what I'd probably do is just mask off things and, and airbrush it and then overcoat it. But now we can do things a little fancier. So what I'm going to do is disassemble this. We're probably going to uh, base coat, mask off, put some stuff on there, some stenciling, and then give it another overcoat and then dip this um, shell and then get ready for some crazy stuff because here comes bras. What are we doing? We're doing whatever we want because we have this blank canvas. We're doing whatever we want. So I'm going to get this thing all disassembled and then we'll figure out what we're going to do with it. Hmm. Okay, I got everything broken down basically into the pieces that I'm going to be working with. Um, I didn't video any of that because there are metric shit ton of videos that are going to show you how to disassemble an Xbox controller and done by people that know it much better than I do. In fact, I looked up how to disassemble an Xbox controller on YouTube and followed their tutorials on how to do it. I left the rest of the parts home. I only have here the parts that I'm actually going to be coating or working with or dipping or whatever. So we've got the basic faceplate. We've got the little uh, other handheld parts there that go on the sides the bottom plate and the battery cover. These are the actual uh, trigger pieces. These are the left and right button. They come as one solid piece. This is the kind of the center bit right there, um, but I'm gonna color that too. I'm not actually gonna dip that, but it's gonna get some color. And then uh, the uh, buttons here, buttons here in the Xbox, they're all gonna remain just as they are, but these sticks and the D-pad are all gonna get colored. So they all need to be prepped. And what's gonna be kind of challenging for some of them is how are we going to hold them appropriately to actually get them painted and then dipped. These are things that I'm not sure about if I can find you know, a stick or something that holds in there just the right way, or even maybe a pair of pliers, just you know, since this is a one-off and not something I'm doing production-wise, just to hold in there. Um, you know, but things, questions that need to be answered since this is something I've never done before. Um, some charts are pretty easy. Bam. That's <laughs> held pretty well for, you know, base coating and painting. Um, but still dipping. I mean, you don't want to hold too much and break plastic, but you need a firm hold on it so that when it hits the water, it doesn't move around and everything. We'll, we'll figure it out. So I'm going to go prep all the plastic. There's stuff you, you've seen in other videos, possibly. Uh, we need to scuff it. We need to use wax and grease remover to make sure there's no uh, oils or you know even fingerprint oil. No release agent that's kind of maybe seeped into the plastic or, or any resins from the plastic production still in there. And then we can get to work on doing our base coat colors. I have some cool graphics that I'm going to cut stencils for. So we're going to put them on there. It's not just going to be plain uh, dipped either. I want it to be as unique as possible. So let me go get working on the initial plastic prep and then we can work on some of the other cool customizations. Prepping is pretty simple. So the options are to stuff up with a scotch bright pad like this or you know you can even put it in a sandblasting cabinet at low PSI like 30 PSI. It's just as easy to stuff up with a scotch bright pad. You just want to take off kind of like the surface um, the surface texture and give whatever coating you're putting on there something to bite onto. You don't have to go crazy with it, but we'll do this to every single piece, every surface that we're going to coat.
On this piece, you can see it's really hard to tell the difference um, between the side we scuffed and the side we didn't, so I might just throw this in the blast cabinet. And again, 30 PSI, get it done quick and easy. A little bit of sandblasting. Maybe you can see the difference. Maybe you can tell the difference if I take off some of the sandy residue there of the old finish versus what's left. Um, so this is something that the, the new base coat can grab onto. Now I've got to use wax grease remover. Once we put wax grease remover, we can't touch it with bare hands again. After that point, everything's got to be gloved. Um, so a couple more steps to get ready. Then I've got, like I said, my designs on uh, thumb drive. I've got to put it onto the computer to get it onto the stencil cutter. Figure out exactly what's going to go where and then what base colors we're going to do in what order. The color that I mixed up, and this is kind of a one-off color, so can't screw up because we don't have this again. We'd have to make a new color and mix everything up, is a metallic blue. And I had grand plans for the Emperor's motto down here um, with the Aquila, but um, it, the stencil just didn't come out. So we have options of what we can do for that. So this whole bottom piece, along with the little plug-in face and everything, is going to get a nice black. Now it's still up in the air if we're gonna do like a gunmetal or like a metallic black or just a plain black. We'll figure that out when we get in the painting booth. But we've got a stencil there so that you'll get the, the blue underneath it. We've got a series of other stencils, I don't even know if you can see it, of things that are going to be on the controller. They'll show after we're done with the dip and everything. Cool things going on there. That's the That's stencils, just... The pictures of the stencils, that will go on, um, but... So next step is to do the um, the actual color that this is going to be along with this little guy right here. And then we've got to actually do the base coating on this to get it dipped. And then we can lay our stencils down and start doing a little fine detail work on that. All right, I recognize there's a lot of noise going on right now. Um, lots of stuff going on here in the shop. I'm expecting some other noise any second now. So this is the color I came up, kind of a custom mix. It's kind of a graphite color. We're about to a breeze sighting. So it's um I'm looking for something kind of graphite like, kind of gunmetal like, a little bit gray metallic. Um, so this is basically a combination of silver, black, and a little bit of blue. And I can't make it again because I didn't write down exactly how I mixed it up. So better not screw this up. But this is our base color, and you can see our stencil underneath. So we'll peel that off when we're all done. We'll have that really nice metallic blue color under it. This is one of the triggers. So for example, when it's all done, actually, um, the combination uh, will look kind of like that. Meow. Did you hear that cat? Now this color right here it looks a little bit weird. Um, that is because this is the required base color for the dip that we're using. That kind of grayish blue is required because the film I chose is what we call Cryptech Neptune Reduced. And that base color shows through some of the transparent areas. You can't really see it right now, but it, it's a really good film. I really like it. It's got a really cool look to it and we're gonna dip on there when it's all done. I'm gonna be here. Oh, thanks. You'll uh, you'll see the base color through the film in Hold certain on. areas. Oh my God. No. You'll see that base color through the film in certain areas, and you'll see the camouflage colors, you know, that are part of it. You get a lot of shine on there. Yeah, it's kind of hard to not get shine with the film right now, but you'll see it in just a few minutes when it's all done, so. Stay tuned. The only pieces that are actually getting dipped with hydrographics right now are the top plate and the, um, the hand pieces.
looks good now, we won't really know until we go through with the full rinse and everything. See these bubbles? We might have to give a little touch up here and there, but ready to do our side pieces. Pretty good so far. Now they're not going to match exactly when we put them onto the other piece. You know, the pattern's going to be a little broken up. Um, we could have affixed them to the top faceplate in a number of ways, but I just didn't want to get that crazy about it right now. But let's get these things all ready for rinsing. This is what happens when stencil plans fall through. You go to the laser. On on, please. Can you hit that test button? I think you need to go that way. No, you're going the wrong way. Take it, I mean, push yeah. it that way. Yep. Well, there goes nothing. You watch this one. Ready? Mm -hmm. Do another one. Stop it. All right, so we are the next day. We gave everything kind of a day to dry and cure. We're in the clean room right now because uh, yesterday at the end of the day, gloss coated with what we call 2K. It's a very glossy um, part A, part B, automotive grade um, clear on all of the stuff that we did our metallic blue with and I think it came out great really good accent pieces for what we're doing. Unfortunately, this stuff takes a full 24 hours to really cure, um, but it's an amazingly rugged, very, it's got a great feel to it. Um, like you can touch it now, but it's still not fully cured for 24 hours and it's just shy of 24 hours. Um, it feels just like when you get those nice metallic buttons on um, like a brand new special edition Xbox controller. It's got a very smooth, very nice feel to it. And it will, I mean, it'll hold up to thousands, tens of thousands of button presses. This stuff will not chip, will not come off. So we've got all of these buttons coated. The reason we have them here in what we call the clean room or the dungeon room or whatever it is, is it's a negative pressure room. So it's basically, there's a fan that sucks out all the dust. So, you know, as this stuff cures, no dust settles into it. So it stays nice. Um, so we've got these, all the pieces we did yesterday. Um, on the dip here, now, if you remember looking at the video or a couple bubbles, you know, sometimes that happens when you're dipping. The side panels came out absolutely perfect. This is not a problem because, uh, you know, you touch this stuff up. When this happens sometimes, these little dots, you touch it up. I've got a very um, fine control airbrush. I will load it up with some paint and these things will disappear like it was never there. And this is really not a lot of work. This is maybe 10, 15 minutes worth of work to do touch up and it'll look perfect. Now the bottom is going to be in the very glossy clear coat as well, along with this and the laser engraving came out really, really nicely. A little higher than I wanted. It's kind of right at the, uh, oh, good save, wow. Um, it came out right in the Aquila's feet, but I think that came out really nicely anyway. And when, again, the gloss coat goes on, it'll bring out that metallic look of that blue that we have. It's the same blue, remember, as these pieces. So that will look really, really nice as an accent when it's all done. And in fact, I can put this back on here. It'll be easier to paint and everything that way. Um, what I was talking about earlier when I was doing the dipping was because of the nation's camouflage pattern, 
yeah, we dipped it totally randomly, like it wasn't dipped all together. But because of the camouflage pattern, it all kind of goes, you know? Like it doesn't look like it was, for the most part, dipped as two separate pieces. You know, kind of, I mean, it's a little bit different, but it all goes together. And the same thing on this other side, kind of all goes together, right? Even though it's dipped as separate pieces. I'll do a little bit, if you look, even these tiny, tiny pieces in there, I'm gonna to touch those up so that you don't have any of that uh, base coat showing so it doesn't look unfinished at all. Um, when we do work in the shop, even though this is a personal piece, like we don't like to let anything out of here that's not as perfect as we can get. So even those little tiny bits there, in between where these pieces fit, that's gonna be, you know, we're gonna do that. I'm gonna do that because I want this to represent the best work possible. through mostly fading, but actually covering up some, some of the areas. And you can see the difference in the sheen of the paint and the actual dip, but when it's all done and it's um, clear coated in the end, you won't tell any difference whatsoever. Um, much, much better. There's a couple little speckles of light areas here and there that I, I just didn't do, because, you know, it, it's just not going to be worth the time, we'll say, for the look. And the clear coat is really gonna help bring it together a little bit better too. But that's how you do some touch-ups. We're ready for stencils now. These stencils are cut, and now we have to do something called weeding. Oh, look how nasty my thumb looks. I'll close up. Um, this is called weeding the stencils, where we have to take out the parts that we don't want. So we have two of these stencils, one that we're gonna use for all the fancy stuff on the inside. Right now, all I want to do is uncover these rings because I want to be able to paint those rings very nicely on to the side of the controller in black. So in order to weed, what we're going to do is we are going to take a nice sharp blade and we're actually just going to remove the part that we want from the stencil, which is the ring. We want the ring to be clear. We want everything else to remain. So we gotta be very careful to remove just the ring from each one. And you wanna be really careful not to pull anything off besides, you know, the part that you're weeding. And we've got here is a uh, nuclear contamination sign, a biological contamination sign, and a chemical contamination sign. This is going to sit right along the side of the controller there. So I'm going to get uh, an overwrap that's going to hold everything together for us like this. I'll be right back. The idea is that the stencils hopefully will stick to this plastic, yay, and now we can lay them down as we want them on the controller itself. Now we can paint our rings and we have a nice mask around the excess area. So we got our black rings and now I'm gonna lay another set of stencils in where we are going to mask off the black rings and we are going to be able to paint the actual symbols inside those rings. All right, so we got the rest of our stencils laid on there. The reason I did more masking is because the colors we're gonna use now, um, a little black overspray on the rest of this camouflage, not a big deal to fix. Kind of, we can blend it in. White over here and red, green, yellow on this side would, would just not really blend into anything and it would be a little bit more of a process to fix up. So I went ahead and masked off everything just um, to keep it nice and clean. So all this gets white, and then I have the rest of these, so then we can place it over and weed out these areas here in the skulls. 
and uh, paint a little bit of black in there to finish off the skulls. Uh, and then we're going to be doing yellow, red, and green for our nuclear biological chemical warfare symbols. And then we'll be pretty much ready to do the clear overcoats on everything. I'm still deciding if we're going to do it nice and glossy or matte or how it's going to work, but we've got a little bit to decide. So here's the completed top plate with our three symbols. Came out pretty good. Now, really, we're just ready for um, some clear coating. This is day three, and all the pieces are just about ready. So we're still not quite at 24 hours, but we're at the point where you can touch. They still have some curing to do. And you can see the finish we've got on these. This has, the way it's finished, has a nice feel to it, because this is primarily where your, your thumbs are gonna be little different in terms of sheen from here and very different from the high gloss on the buttons. I think everything's going to look really nice when it's all put together. So these buttons are done. They're cured. They're ready. Um, our side panels, our front piece, the top panel and the bottom, they're going to need a little bit more. They're going to be ready to be really reassembled and fully good to go a little later this afternoon. So we're just going to give them a little bit more time. but. Things worked out really, really well, I think, in terms of all the markings and everything we put on it. Um, now, you could, because it's camouflage, go a little bit more of a matte finish on this, but again, I wanted that that feel. Can you see the, the texture there? I wanted to have that on there so that you get that really nice feel when it's in your hand. Uh, but, you know, we'll just wait a few more hours, work on a few more projects, and uh, put it all together. Well, a few days later, putting it into actual play. This controller's finished. I think it looks great. Um, the buttons, the custom mix paint, uh, the finish on it, it, it's just, it all comes together really, really nicely. Um, we've got our little laser engraved motto there. Um, the finish, the 2K gloss coat, just really brings out the metallic finish on the buttons. You can see we left a lot of the, the um, you can see here how the hydro dipped, the hydrographic pattern, like I said, even though we did them separately, they just, it all blends together really, really well. And I left these buttons undone, um, just there, but, and just, you know, wasn't even thinking about really, but it matches pretty well to the custom color mixed up for this. Everything here looks great, and there's kind of three different finishes on it between the, the very glossy, the semi-gloss here, and then the more of a matte finish, even though it's, it's got a good amount of gloss, but you can see the difference in texture. Feels really good. Um, don't have an Xbox anywhere near us, but uh, it works great. You know, I've, I've spent the last few days playing with it just to make sure it, it all works really well. Um, a lot of fun to do, actually, getting to figure out exactly how I wanted this thing to look and how it was going to get redone. Just a, you know, two, three-day process. And the only reason it even took that long was because this... Clear coat needs a full 24 hours to fully cure. Giving it that for 24 hours gives you a really hard epoxy-like shell over the whole thing. So really well protected for all the, the color we put on and all the graphics and everything. Um, I'm really, really happy with it. So hope you guys enjoyed seeing the process. Um, just something else cool that we can do here at Patriot Armory and Coatings. If you have comments, please feel free to share them in the comment section. Just one more cool, fun thing we can do here at the shop. So make sure you check all the links in the description. Um, Patriot Armory and Coatings, see all the fun stuff we can do here. It's not all just guns. So you guys are all totally awesome. I appreciate every single one of you, as always, and be back again real soon.